and we'll go from there. All right. Wrecked Albokov. I know it's a green screen. You know it's not a green screen because you want me to throw something in my pool and I don't have anything to throw in there except my cell phone. I'm not throwing that in. You know what I should do? I should have a ball just ready right here on my desk so I can just automatically just throw stuff into the, <laughs> into the uh, pool. Ah, Let's see. Jacob says, we all knew alts were getting wrecked after that disaster. Yeah. I mean... It was coming. We knew that this was a bear market. We knew it was only going to go down. And uh, I'm actually quite surprised that uh, uh, Bitcoin's holding up so well, quite honestly. Uh, <laughs> does anybody know when my shift is at a Burger King? That's good. The Mad Monk. Friends, we are sailing the ship together. Let's set to sail. I like that. Uh, so, hey, Rob, hey, when Bitcoin starts its run, do you think there will be a sell-off once Bitcoin reaches a resistance level? Your thoughts? I think, and if you look at it in the history books, uh, the alts suffer way more than Bitcoin usually does. Bitcoin dominance goes up. Ben is always talking about this end of the cryptoverse. And you'll see uh, altcoins go down pretty precipitously, pretty fast. So the question then is, do you think there will be a sell-off once Bitcoin reaches a resistance level? Your thoughts? I think it's already happening. I mean, uh, I think this alts are, are going down. Uh, I had talked about this thing called micro DCing a couple of shows ago because I didn't know exactly which way I was going to go. And uh, it's working out, uh, it's, well, it's working out well because I'm not spending so much money on alts like I did back in 2018. But uh, I mean, those, because I've been, every week I buy a couple of, uh, uh, different uh, altcoins, and I, I switch between, but every day I buy Bitcoin, a little bit of it. So what I call micro DCing is uh, showing me that alts, yes, indeed, are still getting wrecked. Now, could this be the bottom? I don't know. Could it get, go farther? Probably. Maybe. Probably. Who knows? Will it go up? I don't see it going up anytime soon, unless we see some some pretty big, pretty pivoting by the Fed and uh, maybe some more positive macroeconomic news. So right now, this is the power of DCA. I don't know when it's going to go up. I don't know the bottom, but I can tell you over time, it tends to work out. Can I pick the bottom? No. Can you can kind of see where, where the bottom is? You can. I mean, some can. I just, uh, it seems like every time we think that there's a bottom, it just keeps going farther. And every time we think there's a top, it goes, goes higher than that. So it just depends. Ah, thank you, Bendito. And thank you, Mullet. Uh, <laughs> Sad script when you want to get banned. That's funny. I will. Well, that's why, that's why uh, Mullet and Dez and Beardy are here. They do all that great stuff for me. They're great. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, this is so this is from Roaming Nomad. My grandfather had many stories about the times he told me his childhood how poverty ruled people's lives. Just hoping to see like twenty, like the Great Depression. So that's just it. Like, if you're in, if you're a younger investor in your mid to late, early to mid to late twenties, you don't really know what a what a real like economic downturn looks like. You don't know like the two thousand eight financial crisis. You don't know like what it was in like the late 70s, early 80s, when uh, Volcker was head of the, uh, the Fed chair. And we had uh, Ronald Reagan just was coming into office in uh, the 80s, I think it was 84. And you could see like, I mean, inflation was out of control. There was long gas lines. There was a huge recession going into another depression. And if it wasn't for some of those uh, rate raising, which was pretty aggressive, it had been a lot, uh, a lot worse, a lot longer. That's just what the, what the history books will tell you, right? But uh, you've never seen that 2001.com crash, didn't see that. And then now here we are. So it's hard to fathom that because we've been in a bull run for so long. I mean, I mean, just look at the GDP, it just goes straight up, left to right. But uh, I think those times are coming. You cannot go forever. But remember, that's when all the opportunities are. And I'll tell you this, this story. We have a friend here in El Paso. His name's David. I'm not going to give him his last name. But in 20, 2008, 2007, 
he was talking about a crash coming and, and he, he felt like the, the rates for, for mortgages were just too ridiculously low. You could go in. I remember actually, when did we, so in 2000, we got this house in 2006, six or seven. And when we went in there to get this house, they asked us like, well, show, well, how much do you make per year? And I told them I'm like, okay. I was like, that's it. You don't want to do a check? No, we're good. Just, that's it. I was like, holy smokes. Seriously, that's how it was. You didn't have to show them anything. There was like no like checks or nothing. You said that's how much I make, and then uh, they give you a rate and off you go. And it was like seven point four five percent, seven point six uh, for for the for the APR for houses. Nobody bad an eyelash. And for here, so like people now, like uh, a friend of mine, Mike here, he just bought a new house in December, and the rate was like two point seven percent. And he's like, man, I feel sorry for the people at four percent. I'm like. Pfft. Four percent, dude. That's not too bad. So you just—it's just hard to fathom, but it's coming. And this is like when. So when David, when he figured out like there was going to be a crash, all he did was he just sat around. He sold all his houses and sat around for two years as, every, as like the chaos ensued. And then once everything just went down to the ground, he picked up, I want to say like forty or fifty different houses around El Paso, and he rented them out. Because guess what? Everybody needs a place to stay. You may not be able to buy a house but you can sure rent the price is right. So just what it was. All right. What did I miss? Beardy says, so the next having in 2024 won't give us a boost. So remember, I wish I could, I got time. Let me pull up something. Let me show you something. One, Two, you can't see this, I know, but three, but I'll pull it up in a second. Four. One, two, three, four. So remember, look at this real quick. Let me share my screen so you can see it. It's me no good talking to myself. So remember, I'll move this banner. The and let me move. Let me remove Beardy's question. Okay. So will we get a boost? Remember, so the having the last one, not the last last one, but in 2012, you know, this is the four-year cycle. You have a having where uh, not the, the the amount of Bitcoin that's actually produced. Uh, every 10 minutes gets cut in half. So I always forget the numbers, but uh, you start off there. So now you have limited, even more limited supply over time. So during 2012, Bitcoin was five to 14 bucks. And then it went all the way up to over a thousand. And that's unsustainable. And then it crashes, or there's a dip as I call it. And then you have a reset, which is really the best time to accumulate, right? Because it's not so volatile, but you can still do it in the dip. And then we see that. And then we saw it again in 2016, there was a halving. There was an all-time high, there was a dip, there was a reset. That's where I made all my money. Mostly I was, I was actually BCAing in the dip and also in the reset because during those peaks, it worked out pretty well. And then we saw it again. So in 2020, there was a halving. Eh, let me see here. There we go. There was a halving in 2020. What happened in 2021? There was an all-time high of 69,000. Then we had a dip, which we're going through right now in 2022. Then there's going to be a reset in 2023 where I don't know if that's going to happen, but as far as reset it's going to be, but it's, it's just not going to look exactly like this. So in 2024, what's going to happen? A halving. And if we stay true, the other four-year cycles will have an all-time high in 2025. But in 2024, with that halving, it still looks okay. Because just like we had in, in, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, in the halving over here, remember the halving, it hit all-time highs in 2016 as it was in 2013. So you'll see some pretty decent gains if these things hold true. Will they? I have no idea, but that's why we're here to see practice. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Small Town Crypto says, having all-time high, 85% dip, reset, 69K to 11K. Yeah, maybe. No, who knows? Eleven K is for sure. 
Anytime someone says it's for sure, it's not for sure, but maybe. Uh, lower than that, can we wick? I see a buyer at three, three, you think Bitcoin's going to 3,000, 7,000, and 10,000. Man, I hope so. Can you imagine that? First of all, that thing that we talked about as far as in the money, a lot of people will not be in the money at $3,000, including myself. I will not be in the money. So the question is, if you weren't in the money, would you buy? Could you do it? I can. For the things that I see, especially going on right now, uh, there is really no reason besides the macro events of why we should be this low, quite honestly. I think that um, if you take a look at the growth that's going on, especially for, I mean, we just did a story yesterday on JP Morgan for Pete's sakes, who said they got out of real estate and they classify crypto and digital assets, not blockchain, crypto and digital assets as a premier asset class. And they're going that route. So that's just them. And then of course we talked about some other big places that are gonna, the rails are there. The question though is who's manipulating it if there is manipulation. I love to say manipulation, you know why? Because then people start to really spout off in the comments. Let's see. <laughs> David, what's going on with Matic? Same thing everything else is, it's going down. Although, why would Matic, because there's a big difference between what things will be worth in the future and what they are worth now. So right now, Matic's a great layer two solution for Ethereum. I think we can all agree that uh, the Ethereum gas fees suck and it would be nice to have some layer two solutions like Bitcoin and Lightning Network. I mean, look at the, uh, the transaction fees for those. So with Matic, I only, I see Ethereum, us not using Ethereum per se for, you know, 30, 45, $75 gas fees for per transaction. That's not gonna allow it to scale. No one's gonna be able to do that except high net worth individuals. And who cares about those guys? So we want some cheap transactions to make it super fast and just to work. So that's where Matic comes in. Matic does some good things. They've also got, uh, was it Matic? Polygon Studios. I guess Matic and Polygon. Uh, they take these play to earn or games that are, are not crypto enabled and bring them over to the play to earn site. Worked pretty well for Gensukishi, just saying. What do you think about Bitcoin Cash? I must be honest. I saw the reasoning for Bitcoin Cash as far as like transactions because it was like, well, you know, we can't use Bitcoin for transactions. We saw it in 2017. We tried to use transactions with Bitcoin. Went too, it was too slow and too expensive. Trust me, I was there. And I was like, no way is somebody in a third world country going to use Bitcoin for a transaction because you can't do that. Bitcoin Cash comes along. Roger Veer, who's been on the show. Super nice guy, done a lot for the space. But with Bitcoin Cash, I'm like, I don't know why, what does it do? I mean, what does it do that, you know, Bitcoin Lightning Network can't do? I don't, I just don't see the point of it, honestly. And you can, you welcome me wrong, I'm wrong all the time. So, you know, don't just say, ah, I gotta sell my Bitcoin Cash because some guy on YouTube said it. I just don't see it. <laughs> what? Remind me of this, sweet baby Jesus, pepper tea, Bitcoin dominance to 99% at 3K price by August. That's a heck of a prediction. Oh yeah. Matic is making a lot of partnerships, particularly with Instagram, come up with his NFTs. Didn't, uh, yeah, didn't Polygon, Matic, whatever, they, yeah, they signed a, uh, a partnership with uh, Meta, didn't they? I'm pretty sure they did. And I remember I talked about it. Hold on. Great. That's a new one. So let me share my screen. Look at that. Yeah, Meta's Instagram is supporting MTs from Ethereum, Polygon, Salon, and Flow. It's pretty amazing. So there we are. So yeah, I don't see why. I mean, if this news came out in the bull market, this would have been exploded, but didn't. So there we are.
You know what, for giggles, let me play this again real quick. People attempting to protect those who know massively more than they do um, about the topic and who understand these products right? extremely well. Um, most of our users do, but I, I actually... Sorry. <sighs> okay. Oh yeah, and then this is another one I forgot about. Polyana's branch with, with Microsoft. So again, these things that we talk about, um, you would think that uh, the price would reflect it, but no. But also take a look at uh, what is the stock price of Meta been? It hasn't been too great. They've, uh, there's a lot of different things going on, a couple of issues. So uh, maybe that's why. Yeah, it was a big B. Did you see it? All right. And then... Okay. So Darth... Darth Mike says, what if the four-year cycle doesn't play out? Things may change either extended cycle or shortened cycle. It's true. Darth Mike has, that's, see, that's the thing. Like, you can go to all, you can go to CNBC, you can go to Squawk Box, you can go to Twitter, you can go to YouTube. A lot of opinions out there about what it could potentially do. And very few will turn out to be correct. The question is, which one is correct? I don't know which one is correct. And that was my dilemma in 2017 when everybody told me Bitcoin's going to a million. I figured out they're all a bunch of freaking liars. Freaking liars. That's, I did not say the F word. So with this one, the four-year cycles, even I was like, maybe it didn't pan out because we hit a, we, we hit a high in May 2021. Then in November, we hit another like mini high of 63, correct if I'm wrong, for Bitcoin and the market cap was okay. But... Then I was like, well, maybe the 40 cycles doesn't work out. And then, of course, we saw that December was awful, and then January was not the greatest. February, eh, March, and then April, you know, down we go. So does that mean that the four-year cycles will definitely play out? And then, of course, you know, the extended cycle, and me and Ben and James have talked about that on the show on DCA, and even Ben has said numerous times, I guess the extended cycle didn't work out. You know, it doesn't work out. So the question is then with all the data that comes in, all the things that we have, how do we know for sure something will be correct? Well, you can play the odds and the percentages and go that way. I just don't have, I don't, I got a lot of things to do. I don't have time to look at charts all day. So I just say like this, uh, I think that things are gonna go down. So I'll micro DCA into alts. I'll also, you know, keep DCAing regularly into Bitcoin, but there's a chance to go to, you know, it could go to 25k or 22k, and and when people, you know, I'm I've learned my lesson to not give price predictions. So the thing is, all I got to do is just go, okay, well, if I hit it here at 30k, and then 25k, and then 22k, and then let's just say for giggles, 15k, and then 10k. So if I buy along these parameters, I'm okay because then the question then is, will it just go to zero? If you've watched this channel any length of time, you know why I don't think it's going to zero. And it's not just me, it's big players out there. So I think it'll just essentially go up. When it'll go up, no idea. Maybe for you, maybe in, the, in, that, in those four year time frames we just talked about, maybe not. But that's why like the institutions, they don't have a one month, six month or one year outlook. It's a three, five, 10, 20 year outlook. And if you're China, it's like a thousand year outlook. So sure, hope that answers your question. Uh, Dimitri says, what do you think the top was April 21st and not November? Oh, I think we just talked about that. So yeah, so April 21st, yeah, 69K, November 63K for Bitcoin. We're over 3 trillion market cap. Hey, good days. Um, if the top was April 21st, I personally believe on this cycle, that was the top. And that was it. That's, uh, that's all you get. And then... Um, I think we're just gonna go through this downward slog. That's it. And uh, it'll take some time. So expect expect pain. But remember, if it was easy, everybody would do it. That's why on this show, I don't give you a lot of hopium, like do crazy stuff. I try to give you both sides of the same story so you can make the best decision. And that's where I'm at personally. And I hope I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, great, we'll jump in the pool. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs>
God, some of these comments. How come nobody talks about Maker? I don't know. Uh, I don't want to answer this question, but I will. Hey, Rob, do you think there's any point in keeping Luna Classic? Never had enough to pull it off the exchange and no airdrop. Look, I don't, there is no trust on my side. I will not touch it. You know, you got, in, in this, in crypto, you got to, you know, you really got to start and, you know, you, you do your best and, and, and hopefully you've, you, I hate to say it, hopefully you go slow enough and don't break too many, too many people along the way. That's what happened here. And once you go that route, like, I couldn't get into it personally. Now, could I be wrong and Luna Classic goes back to 100 bucks? No. May, I don't know. Maybe it goes to, well, I don't even know. But I won't touch it because I don't trust it. I don't trust the guy behind it. Um, could he make something awesome happen? Sure, but I'm going to miss a lot of opportunities, and that's okay. I just need to be right a couple of times, and I'll let the other 20, 30, 40 ones just die by the wayside. That was dark, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I can't be. That's just how it is. And so this is a great, I don't know who Mr. Blue is, but if you want me to know everything, you know what's great about the bear market is people don't ask me like, like about these ridiculous projects. Like, hey, Rob, what about pistachio coin? Don't you know it's got a 2,000% APY? You should know about it. You're a mourner if you don't know. It's going to be awesome. Ugh, so annoying. So uh, I'm glad I'm glad this bear market is here so we can wipe out all the trash uh, that are worthless coins. Sorry. So, yeah. <laughs> David. So, Rob, what happened between James and George? Nothing. George, look, George over Cryptos R Us was on DCA before. And like I said before, I'll say it again. He just got too busy. The guy does three streams a day. He also has a car channel. Have you seen the car channel? Interesting stuff. So like that, it was that one and then he had to do CA, it just didn't work out. You know, Ben does like one, I think he does like one a day and he does one for his private groups sometimes. So he had time. And then a CTO Larson's been on and blah, blah, blah. They did also had ran on from uh, crypto banter. I read the comments there. It was... Uh, it was not, not the greatest comments, but to each their own. I like Ben too. Perhaps. Uh, where is it? Oh. There was one thing I need, I need to talk to you guys about, which was um, safety and scams, but I'll leave it for tomorrow. It was all about, um, there, was a, there was a piece on MSNBC where people were going to the wrong websites. Like instead of OpenSea, it was O-P-E-N-S-E-A, -E it was O-P-E-N-S-E-O. -E and people were going to a website that looked just like OpenSea and MetaMask, they would connect it and then their funds got drained like that. And uh, so just don't fall for that. If you're going to go to any place, go to their, gosh, it's so tough. I don't know. How do you, I mean, there's ways to find the, the correct ones. I think if you go to CoinGecko, they have like a list of the legitimate websites, but the thing with MetaMask is I don't know why they don't have like like a phishing attack or a phishing attempt. Like if they if you go to open SEO instead of open SEA, why doesn't it just notify you like immediately like, hey, this is a, a known, this is not the correct website. It would just be so simple. But yeah, people get cleaned out like that. Thank you, Guru. I appreciate you. Uh just just don't dump your crypto money you did. What? Uh, uh, 
Okay, Guru, tell me, tell me what it is that I haven't answered your question. We'll go from there. Okay. Copy the address from CoinGeek and paste it in the wall. No, 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 no. That's, that's not what I'm saying. So, Patrick, you'll be talking about contract addresses. So you can go to CoinGecko for any different project, and from whatever it is, the, the contract address is there. The, I'm talking about the actual website itself. So when you go to the website, OpenSea, you, you uh, link your, your MetaMask wallet, then it can drain it, especially if you do any transactions. So, yeah. People don't read what they're signing. Yeah. Planet race. Do you think the army guys invest in? Yeah, I'm an army guy. I invest in crypto. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. So Quandry says they're doing, yeah, you can't, it's not just connecting your wallet. So you go to something like OpenSea and it looks just like OpenSea. They got plenty of time to make it look just like it. And you say, I want to buy a plot of land on Central Land, or on uh, uh, pick any metaverse project you want to. And they say, okay, uh, I'm going to buy this plot of land. This looks like like plot of land. Ooh, it's super cheap. It's only an ETH, one ETH. So let me do that. And then, of course, they go through the process, and uh, they lose their one ETH. So, yeah. Uh, Rob, what's your take on Lightning Network? We just talked about this as far as like with Bitcoin Cash. Lightning Network is, it's fantastic. And then it's fantastic for all the different transactions. And you had, uh, there was a, there was a the Bitcoin conference in, in Miami and Jack Mahler's came up there. Cause my always concern was this was like, well, if I'm going to use Lightning Network, what about the capital gains? Of course, of you know, when I, process this transaction from Bitcoin over to somebody else. And Jack Mahler's had like a 20 minute presentation where he goes, you understand, he goes, there is no capital gains because it happens so fast. And then in the Lightning Network, second layer solution, we reduce those fees to almost nothing. I think it is almost nothing, it's pretty much nothing. If you wanna pay somebody in euros and you have dollars or you, and it goes from dollars to Bitcoin on the Bitcoin rails and it reaches those people in euros, but there's no capital gains. I'm like, that's brilliant. So that's great. So I don't see why it, uh, shouldn't take off, but again, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yes, modern samurai. I almost wore that salmon shirt today. So the question is, Robbie, still bullish on Cardano? Honestly, can't wait to prove all the haters wrong. You know, the longer I'm in this in crypto. First of all, the more I realize just uh, how much more there is to learn. And the second thing is, is that for all the rug pulls, for all the slowdowns and the shutdowns, for all the collapsing uh, next darling project, Cardano's still here. And uh, even though they take quite a long time to get things moving, is there a DEX? Yeah, there's a, there's a, they have a DEX. They have DeFi rolling, well, yeah. Do they have NFTs? Yeah, yeah, they do. And now they're working on a stable. They're working on a stable coin. And are different DApps being built on it? Well, yeah, things are working out. And um, I don't know. People still call it a scam. I just don't get it. So I still think it'll do pretty well, especially with this. There's a a process that I forgot. It's supposed to increase the uh, the TPS and the and the throughput. If that comes to fruition, and it's not. Um, it's not Hydra. It's another one before Hydra to come in. If that comes out and we increase it, what's the problem? Because if you ever tried to transact on Cardano, super cheap, super fast, just works. So yeah. Ah, <sighs> what else we got? And that's we're coming up on an hour, everybody. <laughs> My, my worry with Cardano is what happens if Charles gets hit by a bus. It's bigger than, in the beginning, there always has to be a figurehead, I think, unless you're, unless you're Bitcoin. And then it doesn't really need it. But if Charles Hoskinson goes away, what happens to the project? Well, 
People are still building on it. There's still a lot of developers working. As far as I know, some people say, there's nobody working on it, okay? A lot of people still build on it. And you can take a look at the ecosystem. I'll post it on Twitter today. Um, so if, if something does happen, that's the whole point of decentralization. It's supposed to stay strong in the possibility that those negative things happen. All right. So, yeah, guys, so that's it. We're going on an hour. I got some other things done. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. I'll consider subscribing. I think we talk about our time sensitive, and that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by, even the trolls. I love you guys. I love the trolls. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next one. Adios.